Welcome to the Welcome Just Give Me the Mic Show. The mic show. And I am your host, host Deborah Coco. 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 And if you do not know about Just Give Me the Mic, Give me the mic. what we do here is highlight positive people, people doing positive things, things throughout our communities and, and worldwide. worldwide. And we strive to bring you the best interview experience that there is. So again, so again, I want to thank everyone for their support. And what I would like for you to do is sit back, sit back, relax, relax. And enjoy the show. Enjoy the show. Relax and enjoy the show, everybody. Thank you again for your support. Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Just Give Me the Mic show. My name is Deborah Coco, for those who don't know. Today, we have a great show for you. You know, I act and I do a couple of other things, and I feel it's very important to not only bring artists to the show, but bring professional business people and some people that I know to come and share their experiences, their stories, and tell you about what they are doing. So today we're doing a highlight on film, the act of filming, the art of filming, and we're bringing one of my favorite directors in today. 180th Street Films is here. We have Aisha Brown and we have Hamid Abdullah. But before you get to see them, check out The Last Re-Up, one of their productions. Fucking time I gotta wait for this hole to bring me my goddamn cash. Same bitch I take care of. What if for me them niggas would would murder her out here? But you know what? I got something for her ass though. Well, why don't you go in there and shake your motherfucking ass? I told you it was slow. Hey, bitches, you crazy? I'll shake your ass. Not that. By the time he get here, hold them down, bro. Please. Yo, bro, you know it's late. I got you. Got you, my nigga. Man, they got me, man. The fuck you talking about, man? Don't tell me no shit like that. Who got you, man? That's how that shit be. You just got home, B. Shit's who speed up, man. You just gotta hit the block. Then you worth the phone, you feel me? Yeah, fat. Last, re-up. Last, re-up. Yeah, last, re-up. Yes, welcome Aisha Brown and Hamid Abdullah to the show of 180th Street <laughs> Films is in the building today. Yes, Thank you. Here. Thank you for joining me. I know y'all was filming this morning yeah. and, you know, you made it happen. You came down and, mm-hmm. you know, we chopping it up now. So yeah. thank you for that. Yes. How have things been? Because it's been a lot going on. It has. Uh, it's just so <laughs> many... That took me to memory lane right there. It took me back through memory 2017. lane. 2017. You see <laughs> that? One yeah. And should I call you Deucey? Deucey. <laughs> deuce, deuce. You're like, deuce, deuce. Shout out to you for that role, too. Thank you. I appreciate 2017. it. 2017. Mm. Matter of fact, we're going to come back. We're going to talk about the last re-up. But how did your love of writing and books... So for those who don't know, it started out with you as being authors and writers. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, my writing comes back from pre hip hop. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it comes. That's I, I started with writing raps. You oh. know, writing rhymes. That's what we used to call it. I, I started with that, mm-hmm. and I learned from him because yes. that's my brother. He's older than I am, so I started writing rhymes. And back then, it was kind of easy because if someone said a rhyme you would just piggyback off of theirs. Yours would be similar to theirs. And it wasn't like you were biting. That's just 
But you did. That's just <laughs> how it was. <laughs> so it was easy, you know. So I would just piggyback, and then that was my rhyme, you know. So we all, when you look back at the rhymes back then, they all had the, it was the same rhyme, mm -hmm. but you put your own spin on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I started from that. I started from writing rhymes. Yeah. Hamid was telling me off camera about when you started writing, you would travel. Like, this was a yes. really big part of your life back then. Writing books, traveling to different oh, yeah. locations and selling your books and things yeah. like that. We did that. We we actually went on, we did like a little tour with Shah Rock. Oh, you know, okay. If we did, and we went everywhere from, we started in New York and we went as far south as like, a little past Virginia, mm. you know, like the, the end of Virginia, almost North Carolina, pushing books. Wow. Her book, that's what we were yeah. doing. Oh, so Erica, I remember before you had actually wrote Luminary Icon, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shy Rock's book, I yeah. remember that. We yeah. talked about that mm -hmm. before. Yeah, so we used to do that mm -hmm. as book vendors. We used to just go all around um, selling books. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't even know about the book game at first. I, I ran into... Um, Terry Woods, but I was at a place um, buying books because I was living in Virginia. Okay. Re, re upping. <laughs> you know? right. re -upping. So I was getting books and I was taking them back to Virginia to sell in one of the bookstores in Queens. And she had a lot of Terry Woods. And she said, Well, I got Terry Woods on the phone. And I said, Can I speak to her? I was like a big fan. Can I speak to her? Wow. And she put Terry Woods in. And, and I said, Well, one day my books are going to be on the shelf next to yours. And she said, well, why one day? That's what, what she said. Now? And that really started the whole thing. Awesome. As soon as I got home, uh -huh. that was like a six-hour drive from here to Virginia Beach. I right. started. Wow, I wrote, you I never wrote know. My, like in 30 days, I wrote that first book. Wow. Just inspired by what she, because I, I thought about it. I said, she's right. Right. Why do why I? Why one, one day? day? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, the, what was that book? What that you? was called Tag Your Man. Oh, <laughs> now we yeah. need a film on that one. <laughs> that sounds like that's interesting. Thing. Well, actually, Tag Your Man ended up being uh, Bad and Bougie. Bad and Bougie. Oh, it was? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. so we have seen yep. Tag Your Man. Okay, <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah, for those who watch that, matter of fact, let's, get, let's talk about the last re-up and then we'll go to Bad and Bougie. Okay. So from writing, what, what, a transition, what inspired you to transition over? and start wanting to make them into films? Um, I'm going to say Sign of the Times. Okay. You know, the book game, you know, is the book game, you know. Uh, we've been doing it for a while, and, you know, people have been selling a lot of books. Mm -hmm. and, um, it pivoted at a point because, yeah. like you used to always say, people, people want to see it. They want to see it instead spans, of reading it. Yeah, so it's, and plus I went to school uh, communications. I went to ODU mm -hmm. in Virginia. I graduated mm -hmm. from ODU communications and I, um, uh, my major was um, professional writing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, so I did a little bit of all this stuff, mm -hmm. um, but I was best writing and the professors would point that out to me. This mm -hmm. is where you need to I had one professor, because I, I was looking into journalism, and okay. she was pushing me like, look, I know you're interested in the journalism track, but I read a lot of your creative writing pieces and you need to go that way. English yeah. teachers can actually point it out early mm -hmm. if you are a gifted yeah, writer. Yeah, that's what she did. Right, because I also got acknowledged by like a fifth grade teacher mm -hmm. for creative writing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I almost got a book deal mm -hmm. actually when I was about 12 years old. Wow. It's just that at that point I became a teenager and I didn't want to write anymore. Right. You know, I was interested in other things, mm -hmm. but I'll never forget that opportunity. Yeah. I even became c police commissioner for the day I wrote a composition piece, mm -hmm. and all, all it was open to all the citywide schools, and I won. Wow. I, I was like, and I got to go down and meet the police commissioner, mm -hmm. go downtown, and then I had to go to my local precinct. It was like a whole package deal, but yes. I got an award as a child right. from that's, the police. That's, that's big. That's too. say English teachers, mm -hmm. even math, and me even being a teacher now. I can look and be like, you mm -hmm. you could do this. Mm -hmm. They see things. They do. And look what happened. Yeah. Leading it back to your story. That one you professor, know? she really was like, it was a few of them that did that, but she really like just was mm -hmm. <laughs> pounding it in my head. Like you, this is gifted is what she, and yeah. I, I, I didn't see it like that, but she was like, yeah, you need to. 
And then she got with my screenwriting teacher and oh. they said, yeah, write it as a book first and then turn it into a film. This was 2005. Oh, wow. They so told they me that. that into yeah. you. That's and it was a sign of the times, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. It was times. It, yeah. The people got tired of, of just reading. People want to see exactly mm -hmm. what they read mm -hmm. instead of, mm -hmm. of course, when you read a book, you see it here. Yeah. But they wanted to visualize yeah. it where they don't have to read it. So that's when we started making our transition. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You know, um, I did a lot of writing, too. When I did write raps, I used to write raps. I used to write, do a lot of writing, mm -hmm. but I wasn't really a, into book writing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Until my sister changed into writing. What a combination, And I was right. like, oh, wow. She said, well, you should be able to write just like me because you, you should write writing raps. Writing yeah. That's where it comes from. Yeah. You know? And she had a couple of books out already. Uh -huh. So I was like, yeah, I want to be like my sister. <laughs> nice. And boom, I came up with Whore Next Door. Right. Right. And we're going to get into the whole next door. We're going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. So go, let's go back to the last Rio. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. What was this project about? Tell us some highlights of doing the last Rio. So the last Rio was something I just made. What happened was my son, um, he, he, had a, he has a couple of his friends have a rap group, mm -hmm. and they had a song called oh, The Last Rio. And right. he let me see the video on YouTube. And I'm a person that I'm inspired by titles. Right. I can hear a title, and I can write a whole story, a whole book, a whole anything, just based off the title alone. That's mm. it. It inspires me. I just keep writing. Just mm. uh, it just a pen takes a life of its own, mm. just from the title. Right. So that's what happened with The Last Rio. I, I just I saw everything. I said, oh, I said, that would make a good film. And I was telling my son, and then at first they all were going to be in it. Okay. All the, everybody in Connecticut. Right. The last minute, everybody bailed out. Why? They they, they inspired yeah. the whole project, yeah. you know. I, I guess but they they, just they, wasn't they ready. Like, well, how much money is it? Like, I'm new to this YouTube. Right. I'm new to everything. I don't know, but I always gave my word. Look, if I ever make money, you gonna make money. If I make money, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know that's a given. But they were just so they just fled. And then I had to try to figure out how we gonna do. So I acted in it. He acted in it. Yes. <laughs> Somebody introduced me to Twenty One, and he's like, you know, I'm with it. Oh, I so live you in Connecticut. Twenty One, way yeah. before. I met him. Yeah, I met him from the last rip. He was the only one that stuck around. Everybody left. I didn't even have any actors. Okay. Somebody introduced me into him in Harlem, and they said, hey, she's doing a, a movie called The Last Rip, and she's out of Connecticut. He said, well, I live in Connecticut. And we connected ever since then. And he was with me. Oh, wow. With that's every... great. That's great. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's how it came. That's how uh, um, Last Re-Up came about. Okay. Yeah. It was inspired by your son. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yes. And Hamid, you was about to say something? Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, 21 wrote the song, too, when it first came on Last okay. Re-Up. Yeah, he wrote the theme song. Yeah, he wrote the theme to song. Last Re-Up. You know, uh, I think meeting him was good too because he kind of motivated me too. I know you know you're supposed to be you like to be behind the camera and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. sometimes it's good for you to be in front right. of the camera. Right. You know what I mean? So that's where we came up with Ducey. Yeah, Ducey. Yeah, Ducey yeah, was ready to set it off. Ducey, <laughs> <is terrible. laughs> you don't want to mess with Ducey. I can say I can already know that. Mm -hmm. You don't mess with Ducey. A lot Ducey. of people ask me, wait, 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 how you get that this concept with Ducey? Well, I'm gonna be honest, with Ducey is like a Alter, alter, alter ego of mine. Okay, you know, okay. You know, they might have been a part of me years ago. Okay, but, okay. Uh, so it was easy for me to portray that on, on, on the screen. You know? mm -hmm. And I only got there because, like I said, people who were supposed to play their part didn't show up. Right. And me and my body, sister so don't mess to, around. Mm -hmm. If y'all not going to show up, then we going to do it. We had to jump in you and know? do it. I had to play did. a part. I played Miss Red. He uh -huh. played Ducey. 21 played 21. That's actually how he got the name from. 21. From the last From the last one. Yeah. Oh, because what happened is Charlottesville, Virginia is where my mother used to live and he was he lived down there and all the, I liked all their names. One guy named was Ducey, one okay. guy named was 21. Twenty-one. And you all those names I took uh, them to put real them in the people. Film. Oh wow. <laughs> inspired by real, you know? real the whole name. project was inspired it by was. different elements, you know. That's right. And that's how we do, though, mm -hmm. whether we realize it or not. A yeah. lot of the things we do, we take them from those special places, that's you know, true. and place them where they need to be, yeah. right? Yeah. That's how you write forward. a book. Mm -hmm. When you write a book, you write a book or, or, or a movie from 
things you really see right. around you. Right. That's what makes it more real. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You don't come up with it and make it up. You just look around. There's so many stories in the city. Many. It is. And many. you can come up with, oh, wow, I'm on the bus. Oh, wow, that's a new book. I'm going to write right. that. Lady just in the Red Hat. Lady in the Red Hat. Yeah, you know? <laughs> You never, never know where mm -hmm. it comes from. Yeah. So what was one of the things that you wanted for the people who watched The Last Re-Up, what did you want them to walk away with? What kind of message at the end of the project? The Last Re-Up, because it was the, 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 the story itself, we, I took bits and pieces of things that happened in the past, mm -hmm. like when we were children, um, uh, and I put it in uh, the series. So the beginning was really about um, a guy that when he was younger, he ended up um, shooting his, uh, he found a gun. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the, the days bathroom. where they used to have the bathtub used to Steel be ones. up. And uh -huh. you can put, put things under, under it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, years ago, that's how bathtubs used to be. Uh -huh. And so some one of the, I guess his father put the gun under the bathtub. The, the young boy finds it. And, and they playing hide, go seek. And the sister kind of scares him. He pulls out the gun. He ends up killing, killing his him. twin sister. Wow. And that was kind of like a true story. Okay. So okay. I took that and I put it in there. And um, so a lot of stuff is just based off of things yeah. that I've seen, right. experiences. Right. And, and that, that's how um, the last re-up. That's that's how it, it came about. So the, these are like these are real stories, yeah. you know. Yeah, and it, it, I like when you do when you have that concept mm -hmm. because it's like you may not see this outside your door, but you could probably relate to a character right. yes. in the story. Yeah. Like it always has a relatable component yeah. in it, yes. Yes. even if you didn't experience this firsthand yourself. That's you know, know? Yeah. that's what I like about that. Mm -hmm. You know. You know, somebody would have, or somebody who had done that, or right. had that done to them. Yeah, you right. Because movies and books is just reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you take reality, yeah, you might not, can't use the people's names. You want to save them for, you know, you're this or for that. Right. But the, the concept. Right, you right. You can't use the concept. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. You know, and um, it was an honor to be played in a... Uh, do see because you know it was it was like something first for me. Okay, that was I your did first act, film. I did acting in uh, junior junior high school. I played Blackula. Oh, okay. That's when Blackula <laughs> first okay, that's came it out. Okay. out. I used to be in theater class. I went to theater. You right. know, everybody used to make fun of me from the hood. You going to theater for? Right. But I love theater. I always love literature too. and writing and music and stuff like that. Uh, so I played Blackula. I mean, Haunted House and everything. I mean, it was the best Blackula ever. <laughs> right. Tell him, tell him. He was like a him. hero. Nobody know, but Blackula, for him to be a vampire, he was like a hero to us. You made him a hero. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he, like, look, he saved the planet. Uh -huh. He didn't yeah. kill people, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. it, it, and it was just ironic just to see a, a black man as a vampire because mm -hmm. usually we all grew up with you know the old the old because I like There's the old ones. Only one black girl that I know. All mm -hmm. the other ones were not black. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. It was one son and that was yeah. a little grainy. So I think he was black. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. You know. But see, I think that what we're talking about now is such an important piece mm -hmm. because I think the generation of children coming up today mm -hmm. they don't have that quiet time to sit with themselves right. to be creative. Yeah. You know they mm -hmm. they come home they straight on the video game yeah. so when I see a child going to the library reading I'm like that you got to commend that mm -hmm. because it's just so many other distractions nowadays where they can't tap in as much as we used to That's right. yes. tap right. in mm -hmm. right yes and we, to the had things. A... we had to make our own entertainment yes, we didn't right. go outside <laughs> We had to sit in our yes. room and create <laughs> yes. and invent mm -hmm. and, and make believe. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm yes, saying? We, did. we got yeah. to really tap into that. That's right. You know? Mm -hmm. And look what it led to today. Mm -hmm. You your love of books mm -hmm. rhymes, mm -hmm. turned into books. Mm -hmm. Now you selling physical, you know, yes. mm -hmm. books, books to now you got a camera shooting films. Mm -hmm. You gotta stop and reflect on those like trans transitions in your life yeah. and your growth. Yeah. So now your first film, okay, so now you 
got into pretty much casting yeah. with this project. Like, yes. You thought you had a cast, but then you didn't have a <laughs> cast. Right. <laughs> so you had to improvise yep. and do what you had to do mm -hmm. to make it happen. Yes. So which film came after this? Or was it Bad and Bougie? Uh, Bad and Bougie really? came after the yeah, last rear because the last rear has three seasons. Three yes. okay. That was the very beginning when I first started. I okay. really didn't know, but I I, I made it work. Okay. Yeah. okay. Really didn't know what I was doing, but I, you know, you know how you ask people, but well, really you gotta do your own homework. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's yeah. it. It's unfortunate. Some people will share, mm -hmm. and some people tell you Don't. just enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just it. enough. <laughs> and thank goodness for the internet because you can just learn so much. That's right. Yes, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So from this three seasons, three and the seasons last and re last re up, yeah. led up to Bad and Bougie. Yeah. So yes. how did Bad and Bougie? Matter of fact, let's show the clip of Bad and Bougie, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. I think this it. is the other one right there. Fresh your boy on the beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New money. This beat without the tags. CL2. CL2. GGA. Introducing. Bad and boozy. Oh, she shorty, you drop? She got money. We need to get, we need to get her. Let's do it. And she's, and, and, she's Dolo. <laughs> Nobody after today no fucking cell phones. Man, she not over here no more. Now I'm out here, bro. Yeah. She I don't go to where we're yeah. here. I gotta text Jerry. I can't believe this nigga and his crew is just walking around like shit is sweet. Okay, so I, I definitely thought that. That was two projects that was released yes. in 2017. Y'all finished the last re-up, and then y'all got right straight into it. Yeah. Straight to it, yeah. okay? That's how we did it, too. We did last re-up season one, uh -huh. and then we went bad and bougie season one. Then we went last re-up, then the next year we did last re-up oh. season two. Bad and bougie season yes. two. Then we did the next year we did time. last re-up season three, and then we didn't do any more uh, bad and bougie. But yeah, we was going back to back. Okay, that's something like, like what we see now, mm -hmm. right? Yes. BMF, and then yeah. well, you know, I don't really watch too much television, but they come out in seasons. Yeah, yeah. They do. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. they normally are not filmed the same time, one right. drop or whatever, and they mm -hmm. come. So I like that, yeah. and it gave you a chance to also, you know, bounce back and forth, mm -hmm. and you got different storyline that mm -hmm. keeps your creativity yeah. up yeah. at a peak. Cause yeah. now you pretty much <laughs> going from one story back and yeah. forth, back and forth. It's like okay, well, where did I leave off here? Mm -hmm. Where we gotta go? Oh, <laughs> yes. this one. And was, connect the dots some more. Yeah. So that was creative. Mm -hmm. That was dope. So tell us about Bad and Bougie. Okay, now Bad and Bougie was the, was my first book that I ever written. Um, Tag your man. Oh, and right. it was basically about man. a government informant. It was a mm -hmm. it was about a girl who wasn't really knowledgeable about the law. So she got caught with I think it was weed or something weed real small crack. at the time when weed was. Not legal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And she ended up um, getting approached by undercovers and they threatened her with like, either you start giving us up people and we're going to do this and do that to you. They really didn't have a right to do that. But she so didn't she know. Fell for it. So right. she fell for it. Right. And she became a snitch. Mm. That's that's the whole that's what the whole bad and bougie. Oh, about. okay. Yes. So she was bad and bougie. I yep. like that. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, these are web series that you have up on your YouTube page. Well, the last re up is still up there. Bad and bougie is not because it's on Tubi now. Okay. It, you can't it have was. both. It was, okay? <laughs> so now if you want to catch that, you have to go to Tubi mm -hmm. to catch that now, yes. okay? Right. She, is, has, she has a new home right at this yeah. point. That's right. And yes. congratulations to you Thank on you. having that transition Thank as you. well. Because that is recent. You just yeah. recently got that just recently, there. yeah. And it's doing really well. It is. Yeah. Okay? Thank you. It got definitely moved. It's all the way up at the top. Yeah. And it's been like two weeks probably, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. So it just came out two weeks yeah. ago. Yeah. Right. 
And so that's I want to point that out to a lot of directors. I actually saw Money and Violence was just released. Yeah. Or two. Yes. Yeah. Look how far back that, that is. Came out. Yeah. <laughs> so even if you put out something on YouTube years ago, look into that. Yeah. You may have a new lane for that same footage yeah. on Tubi that's on another right. platform. Right. So look into that mm -hmm. if you're doing that. Yes. So, okay, Bad and Bougie. Now, how do you feel you was able to grow the characters from season to season. Like, how hard is that? Because you have your main blueprint, mm -hmm. right, for when you first start. So now you talk about you doing season two, season mm -hmm. three. Yes. Is, that a e is that easy for you to keep writing and building upon the storyline for your characters? I seem like it's a, it's a little challenging. And then because with people, too, you, you know, for me to even pull off... Um, the last re-up mm -hmm. and Bad and Bougie, I had to go to where these people live at. I live in yes. Connecticut. Wow. So what I would have to do is go to where they live at. I'm talking about to their building, to their floor. Right. And then call them, hey, where you at? Where we shooting at today? Right where you live at. Where right. you at? I mean, open up the door. Right. I had I'm to here. do that in order to keep the project together. Oh, wow. Because a lot of people didn't have cars. Yes. They would say they don't have no way to get there. And if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have finished two, three seasons of these wow. projects. See, these are some of the factors that people don't think about. Mm -hmm. It's hard to keep your cast yep. going. Because yep. a lot of times when you're starting out, you don't have the finance. Like, I can't pay you right. a, a budget right. for coming on set. Right. Right. You got to do this because you love it. Right. But then again, your actors could be experiencing life. Right. Don't have money, right. don't have, they, they going through things and mm -hmm. you trying to keep this. So that is some of the challenges that a lot of directors yes. have. Yes. And then another one is location, That's sets. Right. Yes. Where are we going to shoot it? <laughs> you can't be oh, on season man. three and just have the same block. No, you know what I mean? You got to be like, I did that. Yeah. I did that. No, but I'm saying. Because. You do it if you have to. Yeah, but, but as you learn and you grow. Yeah, that's what I'm realize, saying. That's right. That's right. You know, you mm -hmm. realize in the beginning, yeah, if we got to shoot it in my kitchen every week. <laughs> We this, is, this is my set. You gotta crawl before <laughs> right? you walk. This yeah, you gotta crawl before you walk. I'm, I'm not knocking that at all. Right. What I'm saying is, you learn. You, def you definitely do. That's how you do. learn. That's right. Now, if you was to come out today brand new, you would know these yep. things just from watching. That's yes. right. Right? A lot of people yep. that set the tone, they don't have nobody to refer to. Right. You know, for the blueprint. That's right. Believe me, I know. <laughs> so I'm saying, doing it now, yes. you'd be like, okay, well, I see they shot this here. They, did. Yep. they had a, like six different places yeah, they went to in that right. film. Right? Yes. And you think about your lighting. Oh, mm -hmm. man, I better make oh, sure. Man. You know, like you I said. Mean, I was the boom man. Right, right. You know, next thing I'm the light man. Right. You know, we, 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 me and us, we put it together. We did everything we had to to make sure, sure that we, we completed it. No, that, ironically, that's and that's what we did. she did not even know how to even shoot the camera when she first got it. Oh, man. She learned nobody would help her. Nobody right. would help her. She learned on her own. And right. then she... Each one teach one. She taught me. See? Mm -hmm. So now we now we got two camera people. Right. Plus I'm the boom mic. <laughs> right, you know, right. I'm the boom man <laughs> and the light man. <laughs> right. You know what right. I mean? And now what you said, you said, oh, we don't need to be stringing up with the mics. We had the one you just put on the counter, right? Yeah, like, now <laughs> we got the little joint. We done advanced <laughs> right. from boom mic. Uh, we're going to cut with my arms, her. Right. To, no it's problem. Right. Just right. pop it on. It's right. no problem. But you have to, it's like you said, you have to learn that. Right. You have to, you know, crawl before you walk. Mm -hmm. So I learned all this stuff at that first. I didn't know anything. You look, you you're know? happy to film. Yep. You're happy that you got people that's going to help you tell your story. Yeah. So, I mean, it's where you at mm -hmm. with it, you know what I'm yeah, saying, yes. to the things you focus that's on. That's right. So you already had, like... Some people might have thought they had a cast, and mm. then everybody break out. And right. They just say, "That's it. Yeah. I'm not going to do it." Yeah. So now you meeting people. Mm -hmm. You don't even know some of them. Right. You know, I, I you build a relationship. Right. You're trying to get them to yep. come. You hope they show up next oh, Saturday for they tape. <laughs> That's right. You know, you hope nothing happens. So right. you got to keep when you're watching people's productions and films. You have to keep all those little elements in mind mm -hmm. because it's not easy. It Especially if you don't have everybody don't have a production right. team it's, it's when you first start. Right. So Start. That's why we're having this talk today mm -hmm. because these are all the factors that you need to think about. People may watch a film and be like, ah, oh, whatever, but look at it from it's a lot of different perspectives, yes, you know. It really is. may not be your story, but right. just think about oh, look at the effort that they made. Mm -hmm. oh, is it good characters? Mm -hmm. Is the actors good? Mm -hmm. yes. There's so many other parts of it. We just try to, you know, 
say whatever so quick. Mm -hmm. You got to think outside the box yeah. sometimes and yeah. really think about what people do to bring you these productions. Right. Even the artist, what he had to do to get that song mm -hmm. out. You know, these, yeah. these different steps in life, it's not easy. It's, not. it's really not easy. Mm -hmm. So now you transition from the last re up to Bad and Bougie, mm -hmm. but you don't only do web series, you also do short films. So yes. let's talk about some of the short films that you've done. Okay, so dying to fit in. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think because I have so many. Okay, that's dying to fit in came up with um, when I spoke to my sister one day about somebody told me that a friend of his passed mm -hmm. in Connecticut mm -hmm. because the knuckleheads are putting fentanyl in the marijuana. Yeah, and this is way before you know? now. And you know they're doing it really. They're now. really right. doing it now. Right. Right. And this was like the beginning. I mean, nobody ever, who puts that in marijuana? Like, what is that? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And people was dying once they smoke. Once you smoke and that go in, it's over. It's over. You know, and people was dying. A lot of people have died from it. So we just wanted to wake people up and let people know that if you're going to entertain in that, you have to be careful. Mm -hmm. You know, you just can't get it from any place or anybody. Right. Because you're putting your life in jeopardy mm -hmm. when you do that. And so mm -hmm. we just wanted them to see Mm -hmm. What could happen when you indulge in that and don't really know who you're getting it from? Right. Mm -hmm. you know? And I like the title, Dying to Fit In, because a lot of times people do try things, mm -hmm. you know, that they wouldn't yes. normally, or do things that they wouldn't normally do just to be part pressure. of a crowd. It was peer pressure. Yeah. It was right, pressure. you know, to feel like they down. Mm -hmm. So let's check out this clip, and we'll come back and talk about, talk about it. All right. I just got out, and uh, this assignment's killing me. And uh, I'm trying to fucking get high, but I got this shit from Juan. You know Juan? Have you heard about him? I've heard about him. I got it right in my fucking pocket. Ooh. And uh, I don't. Why don't you try it? No, I can't. I can't. Why not? Yeah, you don't know what the fuck is real nowadays. That's true. It, a lot on. of stuff. A lot of stuff's I getting mean, put in it. Again, this know. fucking school shit's getting me stressed out, and I don't know what to do. Maybe find someone to try it? I think I may know who would like to try it. He we is? Got, we got, we got uh, a new kid. Yeah. He's new. He's going to want to fit in. And you know, what better way? See if he'll try it. We are getting great about that. You know what? Let's do it. All right. Hey, kid. You want, you want to try this? Oh, me? Yeah, you. You want to try this? You want to try it? I'm going to have to light it though. Here. I want to use the cigarette at home. Oh, no, I got it like a boss. Wow. You like that shit, huh? Yeah. You like it? topic right there could use a whole Serious. segment. I know. And that's a powerful piece. Mm -hmm. And that trailer, like you, I felt that. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know what I mean? Seriously. Yeah. When I spoke to the guy who went and passed, when I let his mother see that clip, she said the movies were excellent. But why they do that to my son? I mean, she just took it like straight personal. Why did they do that to my son? And then they left, ran off, and right. left. Him. But that's what goes on. It happens. Mm -hmm. That's what really goes Nobody's on. Nobody's going to stay around and take responsibility nope, for giving not. you or possibly being connected with that. It's right. sad to say. Yeah. Yes. You know, but. Yeah, that was a deep piece. And see, I didn't even know that you did that film. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, that's why it's good to sit down and talk with people because yeah. people do so much. Yeah. And I know we're all busy, but it's a lot of stuff that we miss, too. Mm -hmm. So you've done a few short films, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. 
I had another one called Invisible Scars, which was about PTSD. Mm -hmm. That's something I suffer with, mm -hmm. and he suffers with. And probably a lot of us a suffer lot, with yeah, PTSD. Yeah, that's relatable, <laughs> mm -hmm. again. And so I did a piece on that because it, it was important to me. Mm -hmm. And that is on YouTube. You can find that on YouTube as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah Plus, I did out. a one called Effing COVID, mm -hmm. uh, where it showed how the mentality <laughs> of what the people went through when that first COVID came out. I mean, I got. Trump, Trump on the commercial talking about the COVID and all that. Right. That was that was what the wake the people it's a, it's up to. It's kind of funny right. too. It's funny, but it's it's but real. It's real <laughs> or how we did not understand that. No, None COVID of us understood was. that. So we kind of a lot of people kind of lost their minds, and that's we had to stay in the house and you couldn't come out. Mm. And, you know, it was like a change for yeah, us. Yeah, it, it was a trying. Mm -hmm. Trying time that affected all of us. It is. I mean, mm -hmm. two good pieces. I mean, definitely. I'm gonna say it once, and I'm gonna make sure we put up the link. Go to YouTube. Go to 180th Street Films with a Z at the end, and check out some of the work that they have put together. It's, it's a nice variety of different pieces of work. Yeah. You know. So how do you? Oh, matter of fact, we have two more clips that we need to show, okay. and then we're just gonna kick it to where you're at now, because there's a lot of things going on right now that we need to highlight. Mm -hmm. Not only is Bad and Bougie on um, Tubi, mm -hmm. but you also have this next clip that we're about to show, the whore next door on Tubi as well. So let's show this clip, and we'll be right back. Check this out. I got you, babe. Let me help you up. Uh -huh. Wait. Uh -huh. Wait. Wait. Uh -huh. Breathe. 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 Uh -huh. Breathe. Uh -huh. Oh, we can't even get up. See, I'm sore. All this shit. Uh -huh. Calm, Calm down, down, girl. Calm uh -huh. down. Calm down. Whatever I want and dress however I want. So you just gonna mm -hmm. go in there for too, huh? You wanna arrest me? So let's talk right. about the whore next door. <laughs> now, the name alone is very, very catchy, right? Mm -hmm. very, very, very catchy. <laughs> It'll make you go, whoa, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So that was also a plus for it. But talk about the concept of the movie and break down what you did off camera about, you know, the perception of the word whore. I came up with the whore next door. <laughs> when I first wrote this book, uh, I kind of wrote it it was kind of ratchet, you know, but it, it was called uh, Snatched. And in that time period, Snatched was a good name for it at that time, you know. And, but as time went on, like you said, time goes on. I try to fit in with what was going on around me and what was going on in time. I said to myself, hey, what are we changing to the whore next door? <laughs> now, a lot of people get it confused with the whore next door, they think I say whole next door. Mm -hmm. Now the whore is mental. I can be a, a male with a whore mentality. But if you say I'm a man that's a whole, that's physical, see? See, I have to do a physical thing to be a whole. You have to be a, do something physical to be a whole. You can have a whore mentality, but you don't become a whole until you did something physical. 
You know what I mean? That's when you change to a whole. So a lot of people get it kind of mixed up. They right. whore and whole is the same <laughs> right. thing. You call me, as, as, as if I was a female, you call me a whore, well, thank you. I'm a good one. To call me a whore, there's a lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> Police is coming, ambulance is coming. So that tells you Police that and ambulance. ambulance is coming. <laughs> You know, whore is meant to. Everybody right. can have a, a whore mentality. Okay. But you don't have, that don't make you a whore. Right, right. You know what I, mean? so, I, I that appreciate was my you for breaking that down because I never even separated the two. I thought they were synonymous, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But I like the way you broke that down. Mm -hmm. You know, so now if you watch it, now you know what that means, all right? <laughs> to the people that actually wrote the film, now you know. Yes. You heard it straight here mm. or just give me the mic. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the what, what is the main... What is, give us a little bit about that storyline. Tell us a little bit about oh, that. Next door. Well, the whole next door was about a female who really didn't like... She wasn't warm on. You know, she really didn't like her life in a sense. Or she felt that something was missing from right. her life. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was the main thing. But she just couldn't figure. She didn't know it was at work, a man, family, something like that. And she was really looking for say somebody she can call a family, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. You know, and she lives next to a girl, a woman who she feels, oh, wow, she has a husband. She has a good life for them. They always happy. And you know, this is what I always wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, so she always wanted what she had, what that lady had. And uh, she wanted it so much and obsessed over it so much because she thought the grass was green on the other side. Mm -hmm. But once she got involved with this, she realized there was a whole lot of more things that went with that. Right. She might have saw one point, but she didn't see the whole spectrum of right, it. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Because when it comes to right. life, you got good, bad, and indifference. Yes, yes. You know, but she only saw the good, because that's the good she wanted. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean? No, that, and actually, I'm glad, see? Hamir, you clearing up some things. The thing that I liked about it was that extra twist mm -hmm. on it. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times you may see like single white female yeah. type of, I want your life right. and I'm just going to take you out and that's it. Yeah. But the story didn't stop there. No, it did not. The story <laughs> kept going. Hey, yep. And it showed like, okay, now that you're in these shoes, yeah. do you like the way they fit? Right. Right. <laughs> Is that's a good, too, you know? Right, that's a good, good analogy. Yeah. Great analogy. You know, you're looking at somebody else's right. shoes, and once you got them, you don't even want them no more. Right. You know, you want to throw them and get them in the garbage, right? You got to throw them to get the shoes, Yeah, you know? yeah. So you have to check out the whore next door, because as you think of the name, we think, oh, people probably thought they were going to see a whole lot Foster of bodies. Right? You know, that's exactly what they thought. Foster and a lot of all this stuff going on, but it's... Wasn't that type of right. shit. Right. It's like, gotcha. Right mm -hmm. now you got to pay attention to mm -hmm. the real storyline. you have to find out from yourself who is the whore. Right. Right. That's There's a that, lot that of again, whores. People don't even know. There's more than <laughs> one possible whore. Right. <laughs> right. They don't know. This person. Yep. that person. Like, they always think point. it's the obvious, but it's not. It's not no. the obvious. And, and one thing that we like to pride ourselves on is titles. I'm going back to titles again. Yes, I yeah. see that. Title we have to do, queen. we spend a lot of time with some people may not even, we spend a lot, a lot of time on coming up with titles. Mm -hmm. I got a computer with files full with titles, titles, wow. titles, 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 it's important, because though. the titles is like, for books, for movies, it's like, I want to say 75% is the title mm -hmm. because that catches mm -hmm. the people. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if it sounds good, mm -hmm. look what the whore next door did. Mm -hmm. A lot of that was the title. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. People yeah. thought they were going to see porno. Right. They thought they were going to be porno. Orgies. They thought it was going to be orgies. Right. 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 crazy. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. But that, that's funny, though. Yeah. But yeah, we have to. Yeah. That, that was a clever move yeah. on that part. Yeah. Now... We had Urban, we had, you know, you thought us about drugs and, mm -hmm. like you said, PTSD. You know, yep. touched all these various mm -hmm. elements. Yep. Which leads us now to the psychological thriller. Yeah. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. The thriller, <laughs> which is called Rainbow Killer, y'all. Yes. Check out this clip from Rainbow Killer. My baby sleeping so peacefully. But honestly, I'm 
honesty. Honesty say I love you. Here goes my baby. Hey, how you doing? Oh, for me? Oh. Wendell James. Wendell James. Hey, babe. Yes? Why you never told me you had a twin? I've been trying to tell you this. And you wasn't listening, you kept putting me off. You kept saying, babe, okay, I'm gonna talk to you when I come home. Really? We gonna leave him out there like that? I'm calling the fucking cops. We ain't calling no fucking cops, we gotta go. Ready to talk? Yeah, what's up? There's a connection between the cold case several months ago and the Misty Waters case. I mean, that, that that was the first experience for me, too, doing something scary. Mm -hmm. Where you don't have to play tough girl or, you know, yeah. or, or teach your mother. Right. It was like, okay, I know that I'm about to be taken out. I'm <laughs> saying, like, you know, I, no, I don't want to say that much. I just want to say, I know something about to happen right. to me, That's and right. I got to get ready for it. <laughs> film or no film, right? Yeah. It, it falls down to that. So yeah. how was this transition for you to do psychological thriller? Cause that's a whole nother mindset. It is. Right. Um, this one was, uh, I did a book first, mm -hmm. The Rainbow Killer. It was on Amazon. And um, psycho, so it's more, you'll see more of it in the next part to this one. Okay. Where it's in the mind of the killer. Mm. But um, I've never done one before, but this has to be my favorite genre. Okay. Thrill is okay. I just like the excitement and I, I like it. You have to be really creative and um yeah, I, I just I never tried it before, but I, I love it. So I think most of my stuff is gonna be like that. Thriller oh, yeah. and nice. horror, nice. those type of things. Nice. Because and I'm I get a, I'm it. a lifetime person. I watch lifetime. Right. I'm a lifetime fanatic. Uh-huh. I don't really watch TV that much, but that's like the only channel I really watch is mm -hmm. Lifetime. Mm. And so that inspired me alone, just lifetime. And I'm like, well, I can start doing things, writing like films like that, thrillers. Right, right. You know, because it, I initially, before Tubi, I wanted The Rainbow Killer. Um, it was The Whore Next Door, actually. We wanted to try to, get, we wanted to pitch that one to Lifetime, but we never yeah. really. Oh, okay. Like The Whore Next Door. The Whore Next Door. Okay. And so in The Rainbow Killer, I, I, I saw Lifetime, but then I didn't even know anything about Tubi. Mm. You know, so. See, again, uh -huh. learning about all these different <laughs> yep. avenues. Yeah, there you go. And let I me say, flip the tip on you for a minute. Wait, wait, I was going to say congratulations yeah. on how you did with the whore next door on Tubi. You know, yeah. that was, you yeah. know, you Thank did really you. well with that. Thank going you so back. much. Okay, Thank we jumping back now. Go ahead, Hamid. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> how did you feel about the part you played in, in the Rainbow Kid? I, I loved it. Mm -hmm. I love, like I said, that was my first opportunity to play in like a thriller. Yeah. I'm, I'm a more of a complex, I, I love complex characters. Mm -hmm. And I love the element of surprise mm -hmm. with that character. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it was something I think for most of us was probably out of our norm right. for doing. Yeah. But I think it was a nice gateway mm -hmm. to make me um, want to be in more right. of right. films like that because I like layer, I like complexity, mm -hmm. I like element of surprise. Yeah. I love um, how you 
how you become somebody totally different. Right. Like, for 21, mm -hmm. from how he flipped it and he, like, he would scare you. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know? Mm -hmm. I mean... He played that character. He would scare you. He really like, did. You would really think that he does this in real life. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. He's saying, like, he's... A, no, but I'm saying, that's when you know you... You really perfected mm -hmm. it. That's you right. Perfected yeah. it to the to the utmost. That's the whole point of it. Right. When people start not liking you because of the character you play, you know you did your job. Right, right, right. That's what it's all about. Right. Like he really, mm -hmm. I mean, to be the lead character and to constantly have to put yourself in that mindset yeah, yeah. and do that throughout the whole entire mm -hmm. film. Right. Yes. I'm saying that's that's not easy to no, do. It's and not. he did a great job. Mm -hmm. Shout out to everybody. Right. Yeah. And all the private, everybody that I see came with their A game yes. and yes. brought it. They wasn't playing around mm -hmm. with it. So we definitely gotta shout out everybody involved and all the projects. But yeah, this one. I can't wait for everyone to see it. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, I really can. Not just because I'm in it, right. but like I think it's a good look for your company, mm -hmm. for your brand as a whole. Yep. It's showing the range for you. Yeah. Yes. You know? And the growth. Yeah, because let's let's face it, a lot of people when we're younger, we first everybody's doing urban mm -hmm. cross yeah. the street, down right, the block. Right. You know what you I'm saying? Change, yeah. You gotta know? change it up. We it's, all, gonna, it's, gonna, think, it's gonna get still when nobody ain't gonna want right. to watch nothing like it no more. So yeah. you have right. to change variety. Right. Right, mm -hmm. right. So now it's like, okay, you have put the guns down, mm -hmm. and now we're gonna do it yeah. mentally. Like yeah. we're gonna, and he's just, you know, the storyline is gonna surprise you. I will say that. Yeah. The reason for it <laughs> yeah. will oh, surprise you, mm -hmm. but it has happened in yes. real life. Yes. That's, that's, it, it does happen. That's, that's where this story. comes from. Right, right. That's it it does story. really happen. Yeah. So once again. You may be able to relate on some level to one of the characters, <laughs> unfortunately, right. in this case, yep. you know. But mm -hmm. so now you're saying, so now you're currently working on Rainbow Killer 2. Yes. So you're taking us to the backstory of who the main character is? Not really the backstory, but in the mind of this person. Okay. You know, in, in the mind, because um, the backstory will be how he, you know, how he was before this happened. It's not really about what he, how he was, it Before. really changed him. Okay. Yeah, when this happened to him, life. it snapped. That's why, you know, this really, it's not bashing the LGBTQ plus community. Not at all. No. It's yeah. more bringing light on what yeah. can happen, what has happened. And the bottom line is you really have to be honest you know, when you're dealing with people. Even if what you say might turn them people off, they might not want to deal with you, so what? But it's better to do that because you never know how people are going to react to what you tell them. And that's that's what happens in this. This is another example of like how you broke down the whore next door. Mm -hmm. It's just it's your perception. Right. right. Don't look at it like all oh, this, that. Focus on the message mm -hmm. as far as honest. Right. Yes. Just be honest, mm -hmm. you know? That's right. And you can't expect that because you feel a certain way that you could control how somebody else responds to that. Exactly. You know? That's right. Because, you know, it could drive somebody off the deep end. Somebody, like you said, yeah. could be okay. Can we talk more about right. it? You don't know how somebody's going to take it because we all got triggers. We all have things yep. that we walking with. That's right. You know? Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to do this show for you today because, like I said, it's so many things I see that's happening good for you. Thank you. And now you have you had your films on YouTube. Now you can go to Tubi, mm -hmm. okay, to find the projects on Tubi. So mm -hmm. yes. and we just wanted to reflect today. We want to let you know what's going on with 180 of Street Films. Mm -hmm. And we're Thank looking you. to see more. And when, Do you have a date for, like, Rainbow Killer? Rainbow Killer, I'm thinking somewhere the first one. That's going to be maybe uh, November. Okay. I'll be looking around That's... towards the end of November, somewhere around there. Um, I could just say coming soon, okay? Coming soon. <laughs> right. That's, That's right. That's right. But it's soon. definitely coming before the end of the year. And we're finishing up part two. That one is not going to be live until yeah, next, next year. year. Okay, okay. Um, and then we're working on, uh, I'm, I'll say horror. We're working on a horror in November, and that's going to be something that I've, I've never done before Okay. on this level. All right. All right. Yeah. Like I said, please support. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to 180 Street Films. Subscribe to Just Give Me the Mic. And let's support each other, you know. And always, it's like, don't read a book by its cover. Right. Open it up. <laughs> right? <laughs> when you watch the film, don't just read the title and be like, oh, I want to watch it. 
and see what you can take in from that project, okay? Because, you know, it's a lot of good work out here. Yes. And while they got the strike going on, Tubi, we don't know. We might be stuck on Tubi for a while. No. You know? So what, did, what else do you think about the film industry right now? Let's leave it on, like, a little reflection on that with the strike. You know, Tubi is, a, Tubi is a blessing mm -hmm. because, really, you don't need Hollywood. I, I hate to say it like that. Tubi gives the independent filmmaker a platform that's, like, yes. phenomenal. Yes, I mean, it's the sky's the God limit. God bless Tubi. And, yeah, it's really, it gives you opportunity. People that would ne normally not even get looked at um, with Hollywood, Tubi is is that avenue. Yes. And also, I do distribution too. I just oh, want to put that out there, so okay. I can help people with distribution okay, on platforms. Okay, that's great. Tubi, Amazon, and those. So that means if you have a film and you don't know who how to distribute it or how to get it out, you can also reach out to One Eighty Street mm -hmm. Films yeah. and see, learn about some different opportunities to get your project mm -hmm. out. Yes. That's great. That's yeah. great to offer that. It's like the give back. Yeah. You know, like mm -hmm. somebody was it paid forward or somebody. Yeah. That's right. That's what it's like. Somebody mm -hmm. open up the door for you and you turn around and open it up for someone else. That's right. right. That's Do right. I have any last like words of advice to give to maybe people that's just starting and want to do thinking about uh, their first film? Advice I can give you is uh, do what you like to do. Uh, you know, the first one might not be the best, but you don't give up. You know, you just keep going on, it gets better and better. Mm -hmm. and, and plus, the only way you're going to get a diamond, you know what I mean, you got to get it through the rough part. Right. You know, that's the only way a diamond's going to shine. Right. So once you get through that and that diamond shine at the end of the day, you know, Tubi has opened up the door for a lot of us independent mm -hmm. filmmakers and a lot of us actresses and actors who never went to acting school. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people in our movies, they never acted a day in their life and look where they, what they do in the day and look where they at the day, you know. And uh, that's what I like about the new, in this new industry now, and I like the Tubi. Yes, you know. yes. Any words? Um, yeah, you know, just uh, try to find out what your purpose is. I'm finally coming into that. Mm -hmm. And then walk in that, live in that, stay in that. And then once you're in your purpose, nobody, <laughs> nobody can change it. Nobody right. can stop it because it's God that creates that purpose yes. for you. Yes. Yeah. I definitely believe that. Sometimes you can be well into your 40s and 50 before you realize, exactly. you know, that what you're here to do. Mm -hmm. And when you get that moment, you feel like, mm -hmm. you like, yes. And that's a beautiful thing to walk in mm -hmm. that. That's right. Because some people pass away and that's never right. even figure out what they were sent exactly. here to do. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's true. to be able to bless others through stories, mm -hmm. through yes. words, through visuals, yeah. it's just... Such a beautiful thing. Yeah. And again, I want to thank y'all both thank you. for joining me thank today. Thank you for having us. Thank and you. And you know, for this artist this spotlight for you. And I hope you all tune in, subscribe to Just Give Me the Mic. Follow so on social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram. You never know. You may be casted in the upcoming uh, movie or project that they're doing. So, <laughs> you know, we all here to help each other. So make sure you stay tuned. And thank you so much for watching Just Give Me The Mic and supporting Just Give Me The Mic. And just stay tuned. We have more good shows coming for you. Thank Enjoy. You.